as promised, we have it. The third and final exclusive reveal of the tournament committee's top 16. And here we go. Oklahoma coming in at 16. Indiana, the biggest slide. They were eight in the last reveal. They go to 15. Iowa cracking the top 16 for the first time with a backloaded schedule that they've done pretty well at, I'd say, beating three ranked teams this month alone. Tennessee losing, losing Jordan Horson, but still staying in the top 16. And Maryland cracking the top 16 for the first time time. We also take a look there at number 11, Arizona, sliding from 6 to 11. They lost to a couple of unranked opponents without their star, Kate Reese. Number 10, Texas climbing. UConn at 9. Michigan, as we look at the next in the top four, falling from 5 to 8 after that route from Iowa yesterday. And LSU making a huge jump after clinching second in the conference for the first time since 2008. And as our bracketologist Charlie Cream said best, this is a slam dunk, a no-brainer. Your top four remains the same. Your number one seeds, Louisville, NC State, Stanford, and South Carolina. So if that was a slam dunk, what to you was a bit of a surprise at this reveal? I was really surprised that Indiana was in this top 16. You mentioned that they fell a lot. I thought they should probably have fell even more and right out of the top 16. Frankly, if you look at the resumes of teams just behind them, Oregon, North Carolina, Notre Dame, all better resumes with quality wins, you go top 25, top 50, top 100. All three of those teams check the boxes better than Indiana does. So I was a little surprised they were there. I was also a little little surprised, not quite as much, that Tennessee was still around. They have struggled without Horston. They've played well enough. Sure. The eye test tells maybe that they belong, and they have a great resume, but they're not really that team anymore, and they've lost a few games. So I was a little surprised they're in, but not shocked. The Indiana thing? That's, I could almost put it in the shock category. You would say Indiana shocking to you, Tennessee uh, not. They have lost three of their last four games. But again, we've heard the committee quite a few times say they always take injuries into account. Tennessee so certainly suffering from the injury bug. Let's get some more on the reveal by checking out, by checking over with Rebecca Lobo and Andy Landers. As we look at the 16 teams in this reveal, Coach, I know that NC State is a team that impresses you. Why? You know, I, I love this NC State team. They're very good defensively, but they also check a lot of important boxes on the offensive end of the floor. I love their offense. First of all, their experience. They're five starters, three graduate students, a senior, a junior. Is there a more experienced team in the country than NC State? They're disciplined. They take care of the basketball. They don't hurt themselves with unnecessary turnovers. They're also very versatile. They can play fast. They can play slow. They can beat you inside from the perimeter or off the bounce. They're also a very balanced basketball team. Eight players have scored 16 points or more on multiple occasions this season. The thing that probably gets most people's attention when you play NC State, their ability to shoot the three. All five starters can can it from downtown. And when they post Elisa Kunane inside at 6'5", here running the floor, getting position early, impossible to guard one-on-one. -on -one. She's going to score most of the time. So what does that mean? That means you have to make a decision. Are you going to help on Kunane down in the block? Because if you do, you could be caught in a recovery mode, covering back to your man. And in order to be effective there, you have to get back quick enough or you give up the three. Remember, there's four three-point shooters on the perimeter. All of those perimeter players, very good at putting it on the deck, can finish at the rim. This NC State team offensively, as good as anybody in the field. And we'll move from an impressive one seed to the team that I think is the most intriguing three seed, and that's the UConn Huskies. Usually this time of the season, late February, you know exactly what and who a team is. That's not the case with Connecticut because of the players they've had in and out of their lineup this year. Who are they? Are they the team that had their first loss to an unranked opponent since 2012 when they lost to Georgia Tech? Are they the team that had their first conference loss since 2013 when they lost to Villanova? Or are they the team who, when finally fully healthy in these last two games, averaged 91 points per game? And oh, by the way, who is back? Just the reigning national player of the year in Paige Beckers. So who is UConn right now? We don't know, but we do know what they have been the last 13 tournaments. This year, when you look at 2022, what we know is right now they are the most dangerous three seed 
in the field. And of course, this is just two teams, two stories in what's going to be an incredible NCAA tournament.